and so that's and I think it's telling me that it's going to switch over to uh, an, another um, frame part two but anyway <clears throat> anyway um, in 2004 DC had 8,253 homeless people that year they began a 10-year plan to end homelessness uh, in 2015 we started a five-year plan to uh, make homelessness rare brief and down recurring uh, and so we're, we're nearing the end of that plan cycle but in 2016 we had 8,350 homeless people which is 97 more than we had in 2004 when they began the 10-year plan so it was 10, two years after the 10-year plan and uh, and we had 97 more people than we started with 12 years prior <laughs> go figure so things aren't really going well uh, the numbers for this year uh, I haven't checked in a couple days but when I when I checked around the 9th I think the numbers had not yet come out uh, so they may have come out today or yesterday I'll check as soon as I get off of this video and if they haven't come out yet they should be coming out within the next few days uh, and I'm guessing that we have give or take 6,500 homeless people in DC maybe as low as 6,300 maybe as high as 6,700 last year it was like 6,521 I don't think we've moved the needle all that much over the past year the count was done in January the numbers come out in May they used to come out in April but um I'm guessing that with COVID-19 and the economic shutdown, economic downturn, uh, we're going back to 2008. And uh, so 2021 will be much like 2009. Uh, there was not actually a major uptick in homeless people in 2009, even though we were in the throes of the economic downturn. Uh, we didn't actually get the massive increase until about 2014 uh it, it took a few years but something tells me we we may reap the results of the economic downturn of 2020 a lot sooner but in any instance the city is going to need to uh scale up its shelter and have probably about 8,000 beds in the very short term and maybe 10,000 beds by 2022 uh, Muriel Bowser actually leaves office in January 2023 if she doesn't get reelected for a third term in 2022. Uh, and, and so, let me see. Well, it's, it behooves her to make sure that, that uh, she doesn't let the number of homeless skyrocket by failing to plan for a major economic downturn and and uh, for the results to occur during her during her term so whereas we we saw that the major jump in in the number of homeless people six years well, well i shouldn't even say six years i should say a little more than five years because the economic downturn ha happened during the the end of 2008 and it was the beginning of 2014 when we counted uh, 889 more homeless people than we had in 2013 so we we would go up by about 200 people per year for several years after 2008 and then we went up by 889 homeless people uh from 2013 to 2014. so in 2008 we counted 6044 homeless people and then we had those small increases for several years and then we had 6,859 homeless people in 2013 and then we had 7,748 homeless people in 2014 uh, and so from 08 to, to 2014 homeless the number of homeless people went up by almost a third so right around 30 percent and and uh I don't know if we'll get that 30% increase in the next year or two as opposed to five or six years out. But Mayor Bowser should definitely prepare for it in much the same way that Obama 
prepared for a pandemic. And hopefully, whoever comes after Bowser, if she doesn't win a third term, that is, um, will, will not do what Trump did by tearing apart the preparations that Bowser made for the coming troubles. Uh, so, she, so she should go ahead and prepare for 8,000 homeless people in 2021 and 10,000 homeless people in 2022. Even if the beds remain empty for a while, something tells me that uh, possibly in the next mayoral term, those beds will definitely be used. So, and, and so there's that. But I should also point out, and I'm down to my last uh, point or two here, is that Muriel Bowser, since the middle of 2015, the year that she became mayor, she was inaugurated on January 2nd, 2015. Uh, and in the middle of that year, right around August, she began a campaign to tear down homeless tent cities. Uh, she's failed in that effort. Uh, the homeless uh, simply began to move their tents to a different location. Uh, the rules around teardowns don't, don't really make it possible for her to succeed. Um, they have to give a two-week warning to the homeless. Uh, and then the homeless oftentimes will pick up their stuff right before the scheduled cleanup. They'll move out. They'll let the city officials clean the area up. And then they'll come back immediately afterwards and you have to uh, restart the two two week uh, warning cycle. <laughs> and so it's, it's just a game of whack-a-mole or they, they, they might just move to a, a different block and set up again. And then you have to post two signs on either end of the area that's gonna be cleaned up. And they have this two week notice. They, they uh, pull up the stakes an hour before the schedule, schedule cleanup, which is always at 10 a.m. And so, like I say, it's a game of whack-a-mole. Um, let me see. And w one more thing I have written down here, which is that in 2014, uh, in March of 2014, uh, a then eight-year-old girl named Relisha Rudd was abducted from the family shelter at the DC General uh, Hospital turned shelter the DC General Family Shelter, as it was called. Uh, that shelter has since been closed down and I haven't been by there recently, but I believe it's in the process of being torn down. It might have been completely torn down. It's been that long since I've been over there. But um, in, in any instance, uh, uh, Muriel Bowser was a councilwoman at the time and she was running for mayor. And she jumped on the emotional bandwagon because there was a major public outcry around Relisha Rudd. I mean, every, everybody went to bat for a cute little girl. And uh, so she jumped on that emotional bandwagon and said she was gonna fix uh, issues around homelessness. And that was a major part of her platform. It was definitely the only part of her platform that were, people were highly emotional about. Uh, and so, Years after uh, the Relisha Rudd story, I still heard people talking about it. And, and so if she fails in this respect, if she fails to adequately prepare for the influx of homeless people uh, that we might get because of the COVID-19 uh, inspired economic downturn, then that will make her look really bad uh, especially since we also had a major uptick in homeless people from 2015 to 2016. Uh, so there was a major uptick from 13 to 14 by 889 people. And then uh, we went down by 400, 450 people from 14 to 15. And then from 15 to 16, we went up by 1,052 people to, to 8,350. Uh, Mayor Bowser was a year into her term. Uh, she blamed the, the massive increase on the fact that the previous mayor, Vince Gray, had some very strict rules for access to shelter, at least for families. And so people who needed shelter were couch surfing. And all of a sudden, when she became mayor and she uh, 
softened the rules and gave uh, homeless people, namely families, greater access to shelter, they came out of the woodwork. Okay, and that, and that is a credible argument. But with her realizing that, uh, she should make sure that she doesn't do something that decreases access to shelter so that when uh, her successor takes office, there's a, a massive influx of homeless people uh, into the shelter system. So she should, with that truth in mind, with her own uh, past uh, administrative issues in mind, should make sure that she prepares for the influx and and that she maintains uh, a high level of access to shelter for those who need it. And uh, better yet, she should speed up the process for connecting people to affordable housing. Okay, so I'd be remiss if I didn't say that too, because shelter is definitely not the end-all be-all. It's not the answer to the lack of affordable housing, but an increase in affordable housing is the answer to the lack of affordable housing. And it's better to force the, force the rents down across the city than it is to have uh, programs of finite size that create affordable housing for an insignificant fraction, fraction of a percentage of the people that need affordable housing. So I've said a lot and I'll leave it there.